So yesterday was a beautiful day. I want to tell you guys a story. So I was outside cutting my grass. And if you've been a subscriber to my channel for some time now, you'll know that you know the story about the woman on my street who is who has a gay daughter. Now, this woman has simply the largest LGBT flag that I've ever seen posted outside of somebody's house. Um, I have to see this flag each and every time I drive up my street. It's just it's just a huge high eyesore. It's something you cannot avoid. You cannot get around. It's there. Uh, well, her daughter, the one that's gay, was over at my neighbor's house yesterday, and they were talking because they're friends. So I'm outside cutting my grass, and when I turn the mower off, I can hear her talking. She intentionally says, oh, you must be talking about those Christians, while nodding her head in my direction to get my attention. So I look up and say to her, yeah, I'm a Christian, and how you doing today? Just like that. And immediately, her smirk turns into a frown. And she rolls her she rolls her eyes at me and then turns her head back to my neighbor and starts talking again. And as I'm heading, and so I kind of ignore it. And so as I'm heading to my front door to go inside my house, right before I get to my front door, she yells out, Your God is evil, and you're evil for following him. And then turns back to my neighbor and continues talking, like she didn't say anything. Now she's saying all this because when I first moved to this neighborhood over five years ago, her and her mother came to my house to welcome me, to greet me to the neighborhood. And while we were talking, I made it clear that I was a God-fearing Christian. And then she began asking me questions. And that's why we're here today, because of my responses to the questions. That's why she hates me. But to respond to her comment, my God is not evil. Okay, The God of the Bible is not evil. My God is merciful, among other things. But mercy is what I would like to deal with with this video in particular. Ephesians 2.4, but God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, now, the love there, speaking in a universal sense, is God's benevolent love. The fact that my neighbor is alive today by way of living a blasphemous life proves that, that God is a loving God. See, you want to know what the problem is? Sinners sin and nothing happens. Let me say that again. Sinners sin and nothing happens. They're not hit by a lightning bolt. They're not struck down dead immediately after they committed the sin. Nothing happens. They drink down iniquity, iniquity like water, and then they go to sleep in peace. Okay, God is not like us. He is slow to anger, but he's angry. Psalm 7. You can have someone like my neighbor who's living with her girlfriend, who's currently living with her girlfriend in her, in her mother's house. She wakes up in the morning, birds chirping, sun shining through the window, air conditioning on so she feels good in the house. Everything seems all right. God's not angry with me. That's how she feels because she doesn't feel his wrath. Okay? So she thinks nothing's wrong. She thinks I have money in the bank. Um, I'm in good health. You know, God doesn't hate me. God's not angry with me. I don't feel his anger or his, or his hatred. And that there is the terribleness of God. Because the whole time, God's wrath hangs over her head. And he's just waiting for the appointed day. For what? To kill her and send her to hell. Okay. Paul Washer has a great illustration in which he says, it's as if God has a bow and arrow and is pointed at her head. And every day his finger loosens just a little more until that day. Think about that. Sinners sin. And because nothing happens, they think everything is well. They think everything is okay. But that's not the case. Okay. God's mercy, his compassion is not meant to make you think everything is okay. It's meant to bring you to repentance. What happens is we get accustomed to God's grace. At first, we're amazed by it. The second time, not quite so much surprised. By the third or the fourth time, we begin to expect it. Then we assume it. And then we demand it. And we're angry if we don't get it. Because the greatest distortion in our thinking dear friends, is thinking that God owes us mercy. That God is somehow obligated to be gracious to us. But think about that. The minute the idea comes in your head that God owes you mercy or owes you grace, let a bell go off in your brain that says, whoops, I'm confusing these concepts because grace, by its very definition, is voluntary. 
God is not required to be merciful. He reserves the right to be merciful to whom he will be merciful and to be gracious to whom he is gracious. You can plead for grace. You can beg for mercy, but you can never, ever demand it. Justice may be required, but never, ever mercy. And it's because God is holy that any time he withholds justice, he is giving grace. 